whenever Yeet puts out a new album, it always reminds me why it's important to always chase refreshing sounds. And it usually teaches me a new thing about music production along the way. For this video, I'm going to be using a sample to create the beat. I noticed on this album there were a couple instances where samples were used to create the songs. And it makes a great point that samples can be used to create any genre. Okay, so this is the live screen of Ableton, and this is the project file for the beat. I always make my beats in the live screen and then move it over to this arrangement screen after. My goal for this was to find a nostalgic sounding sample and flip it into a modern sounding beat. I decided to go with this early 2010s vibe, it's a classic. And what I went with was this. I started looping out parts of it and I stuttered it, and I also did a little bit of processing to it to make it sound crunchy. To get that stutter, you don't even have to add an effect in Ableton. You can go right into the audio clip, and there's some parameters that you can mess with to make it do that. So these are the effects that I chose to put on the actual sample. Uh, this utility is just controlling the volume there because it would be OD loud otherwise. And this compressor is not doing anything yet. It's for the kick. It's just a sidechain compressor. But the redux is the big thing here. And that is bit reduction. I'm just making the audio quality worse on purpose, making it more crunchy with a digital distortion sound. Those were the different sections that I chose to loop out. Since I was just looping sections, I didn't have to uh, come up with a new bass line. I just followed the notes that were already there. So looking at the bass, I have a bass group. And this is what it sounds like. It's pretty cool. It's a, a wall of different bass sounds. This first bass has like four or five different bass one shots. I just stacked them in an instrument rack and turned them down to different volumes just so I could make my desired sound I was going for. These were the bass notes. I ended up playing them on a MIDI keyboard, and once I got them down, I copied it over to the 808, just the MIDI pattern itself, and I added an extra note, just because I thought it sounded good. I needed to add slightly to the bass line though, and make it a little more stuttery or glitchy, so I added a third bass sound with a very fast decay, and I ended up just playing octaves. You're going to notice throughout the whole process of this beat breakdown, I'm going to keep talking about this effect erosion and that other effect redux those things are important because they dirty up the sound in a way that makes it characteristic to yeet i think it's because his tone of voice is very uh, deep and it has a warm tone and it sits over these beats with a lot of high end very nicely i'm just doing a little limiting on the bass group and now it's time to show you the drums i only had three different layers of drums I have this hi-hat pattern that has a lot of motion in it due to the different velocities of the notes. Then I have this snare drum that I layered out of three different snare sounds from the uh, Rio 25K free kit that came out like over a year ago. And then I have that open hi-hat. Nothing real special going on with it, it's just super simple. For the processing of my drums, I use a little bit more redux and I use drum bus. Drum bus is awesome because it controls all your drum sounds at once if you put it on the group and you can use it to really dirty up the drum sound. Oh yeah, I'm also using my send and returns on Ableton here. I'm sending 
the drums to the reverb a little bit, just slightly. And I'm also sending the drums over to Drums Boombox, which is this uh, multi-effects rack. It's a free stock effect. And you can also control your drum sound directly through that and EQ and compression and stuff, saturation, whatever. After I added the uh, basic drums, I added the kick drum just so I knew what available space I had. Since there were so much bass frequencies going on already, I didn't want a, a kick with a lot of muddiness or heaviness to it, so I opted to take that out and make a lighter kick that would stand out a little more. The big thing there was mainly using a little bit of overdrive on the kick to make it sound a little fluffier. I then used a little bit of limiter to smooth out the kick and the bass. This is when I started adding sidechain compression to things that had a lot of bass frequency in it. So like the sample and then my bass group. I decided for the next section of the beat I was going to use a different part of the loop. And for that, it needed a different bass line. So I got sturdy with the 808. Most 808 sounds come perfectly mixed, but I add a little EQ always over it. I'm just boosting some of the highs or cutting some of the uh, muddy frequencies out. I knew I didn't want to just use the sample solely for the beat. I wanted to add some more musical elements myself. To accomplish that, I used what is on this pink channel and this blue channel right here. There is an additional synth bass right here. And then over here is a synth pad. They're all stock Ableton sounds, they're really good. Yeah, so this synth pad, and I just added a little bit more reduction and erosion. This was the last element that I added to the whole beat because I felt like since I wanted vocals on the beat, I didn't need to complicate it too much. And that's what began the arrangement process. I ended up just looping out my ideas and uh, removing and adding drums in different sections. I didn't go too crazy on the automations. I just did some reverb flare automation there and I copied and pasted it over. I also did a little bit of automation with the redux effect, just kind of making it uh, sweep and feel like a filter almost. And that is all the automation for this beat. It's super simple. If you feel like your beat in the arrangement process is too boring, you can try taking uh, elements out and putting them back in at different times. And once you've done that and you need to create even more motion, you can add some one-shot riser effects or like white noise uh, sweeps or whatever you want to call it. Everything in red here is one of those effects. If I just solo it, you can hear what it sounds like here. It's simple stuff. The key to these, to get them to work in context, is to turn them really low in volume. When you cook these beats up, you have to trust the process and know you're about to put some mastering effects on at the end, like a limiter, obviously, but the secret sauce is overdrive, just like four or five percent. <laughs> Even though it sounds really loud, that's called perceived loudness, I'm not actually sending signal into the limiter super hard.
nearly completes the beat that I was making there. For a little outro, I did a little automation with the redux, just sweeping down. I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video and watching me make this beat. Maybe you learned something or just are relaxing just watching this. <laughs> Nevertheless, just stay tuned for the next video and I'll catch you soon. All right, bye. Thanks.